Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally getting all of this ground venison taken care of that I pulled out of the small freezer that we defrosted last weekend. I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do with all of this. I knew I liked the idea of having some meatballs ready to serve in the freezer that were already cooked. I also thought about making a few large meatloafs that were raw but ready to go in the instant pot or the crock pot. And I also really like just having some ground meat that is already cooked and ready to be seasoned in the freezer or better yet on the pantry shelf in a jar. I decided that what I wanted the most was to put some ready to serve meat in the freezer. So all I have to do is pull it out, defrost it, and heat it back up. So I combined my meatloaf and meatball idea and decided to make some extra large meatloaf meatballs. I decided instead of making a few large meatloaves, I would just mix up our favorite meatloaf recipe, which I will link in the description below, and form them into extra large meatballs so everyone gets one on their plate, maybe served over a bed of mashed potatoes, and that just sounded really delicious and pretty easy. I am going to go ahead and bake these so that all I have to do is defrost them and heat them back up. Now, this recipe is pretty simple, but there are a few things that just seem to set it apart from other meatloaf recipes I've had in the past. This calls for onion soup mix, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, breadcrumbs. I prefer to use Italian breadcrumbs because it just adds even more flavor. Shredded cheddar and some egg to bring it all together. Now, my favorite way to mix up meatloaf once you have all the ingredients together is just to do it by hand. It's really the best way to get all of the ingredients well combined without having any surprise clumps of cheese or worse onion soup mix, which would be a very salty bite. So the only downside was this was a pretty cold day and the meat was just barely defrosted. It was so cold. By the time I finished mixing all of this, my hands were numb. I ran them under some water, which made it even worse. That was cold. It was like putting your snowy frozen hands under warm water in the winter. Now, I did decide to go ahead and weigh a heaping quarter cup of the meatloaf mixture to see how close I could get to about a quarter pound meatball. This would be plenty for each of my children, even my big kids, to just have one meatball over their mashed potatoes um, with a side salad or some veggies. I ended up with 24 of these quarter pound meatballs, so I figured that will make two dinners for us plus leftovers both times, and that was perfect. Next, I am going to mix up six pounds of ground venison, season it with salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and Worcestershire sauce, and then simply form them into patties and stick them in the freezer for easy burger night. Venison is extremely lean, and oftentimes when you order ground venison from the processor, they will add um, lard or tallow to it to give it a little bit more moisture. So I usually add some sort of heaping scoop of bacon grease when I am using it for something like forming burger patties. These patties are going to be delicious. It smelled so good, and my kids are so excited to see these two big gallon bags full of burger patties in the freezer. The meatloaf meatballs are finished. I baked them a little low and slow, similar to how I would in the crock pot, and they smell amazing. They look beautiful. I think it's going to be a great idea that I will definitely use in the future. The last thing I wanted to do with the remaining ground beef, which I thought was just three pounds, but I'm kind of starting to think that these are packaged in one and a quarter pound packages because I ended up with a lot of cooked meat. I could go ahead and pressure can this in quarts or pint jars, but I think because there's just three quart bags, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the freezer. We could use this for Big Mac salad, taco salad, chili, burrito bowls. It's going to be really convenient. It was such a productive day in the kitchen. I'm thrilled to have all of this meat ready to use in the freezer. I ended up with 24 extra large meatloaf meatballs almost four pounds of ground venison already cooked, and 28 burger patties. Now it's time to tackle the refrigerator. 
I haven't cleaned out the fridge really well in about a month, probably since just before my last big grocery haul, and today is the day. It's getting out of hand. There are some things that probably need to be thrown to the chickens, and I also want to consolidate and purge our condiments. I don't know about you, but sometimes the doors of our fridge get neglected. Then the children can't see what's in there, and we end up with multiples open of the same item. I don't know if you could see here, but I am emptying several duplicate bottles into one bottle each, checking expiration dates, wiping off bottles, and now it is time to start actually cleaning the shelves and putting things back. It's hard to tell from this distance and the speed of this video, but it is amazing how much more space we had in the doors than when I started. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. I have not pulled the glass out of this bottom shelf, I think since we've owned the house for almost four years. So it felt great to pull this out, completely clean it from top to bottom, get the inside of the fridge really well, and then take care of the other shelves as well. Wow, look at the difference. It is so clean, it looks like the day we bought it. I didn't end up having to do these two drawers or the cheese and meat drawer below it because I tend to do those on a pretty regular basis. We hate throwing away food. We have chickens and two dogs, so anytime food is just beyond us being comfortable to eat it, we can still give it to the animals. First, I'm putting back condiments and things like these two pickle jars. These are our very favorite pickles. The flavor is amazing. It's the Clausen refrigerator pickles. Um, they're a little bit pricey, but we actually love to save the containers and marinate chicken in the pickle juice. Kind of like Chick-fil-A. We go through a lot of sour cream in our house every month. I bought these two containers of cottage cheese over here to the right and I set them aside because I realized we are not gonna go through them before they expire. So what I'm going to do is put them in half cup snack baggies and stick them in the freezer so I can use them to make some of my favorite Trim Healthy Mama protein shakes. When I put things back in these doors, I tried to put like things together, like different sauces, barbecue sauce, buffalo sauce, salsa, sriracha mayonnaise, those things all went in the same shelf on the door. And then over there to the right, we've got like pickled jalapenos, um, sub sandwich dressing, chow chow for bratwurst, um, my two jars of bacon grease, and a few other home canned peppers. When I cleaned out our small freezer last weekend to defrost, I went ahead and pulled some things out like two pounds of kielbasa to have with cabbage one night, I finally found cabbage at the store, along with some summer sausage that my older kids enjoy for a snack with some cheese and fresh veggies. It felt really good to get this fridge cleaned out, completely organized, and completely cleaned up. Now everything is in its place, there are no more unnecessary duplicates in these doors, and I know that nothing in the fridge is expired or even close to being expired. Now we have room for leftovers this week, so nothing gets wasted, and the kids are able to find what they need very easily. I hope this video inspires you to get some things done in the kitchen, maybe tackle a few cleaning or organization projects that you've been putting off for a while. It feels so good when you get it done. And this probably took me a total of 30 minutes to get it all cleaned out, completely wipe down the fridge and get everything put back where it belongs. Thanks for watching.